Hey everybody, welcome to the beautiful Symphony of the Seas ship tour. Uh, this ship tour was shot in September of 2021 on an Eastern Caribbean itinerary. Now I like to do my ship tours a little bit differently than most people. I love to walk around the ship, that way you get a good feel on how the ship moves and the layout of it. So we're going to start here at the top on deck 17 and work our way all the way down. And now on deck 17, you're going to find most of the sweet stuff. So if you are in a suite, you're going to get to enjoy these amenities. On the one side is the suite lounge right in front of you here. This is just a nice little kind of relaxing lounge for uh, suite guests. Uh, so you have to have a grand suite or above. It's going to have little kind of like light bites, uh, coffee, espresso, little machine that are all included if you were in a grand suite and above. And on the other side of the ship, this is where you're going to find the sweet specialty restaurant. So again, only sweet guests can participate in this. It's called Coastal Kitchen. Um, lots of different kind of more fancier foods, I guess, <laughs> for your sweet guests. They can still go to the main dining room, but this is kind of the sweet uh, dining room up here on Deck 17, Coastal Kitchen. And uh, actually, if you are in a junior suite, you can participate in Coastal Kitchen, but you can only go to dinner. So if you're in a junior suite, you can only participate in dinner, grand suites, and all above that, you do have the luxury of going to breakfast, lunch, and dinner in the coastal kitchen. Now arriving on deck 16, you're gonna find uh, basically the entire back of the deck, back of deck 16, is the Windjammer. This is your main buffet on Symphony of the Seas. It's very early morning when I went through here, so nothing uh, really has been set up, but I can give you a quick uh, run through. Got your little washy-washy hand washing stations. Make sure you wash your hands before you get into the buffet. And on the right, that's your um, drink bar, so you can get your included drinks and everything there. Lots of different uh, types of food on the buffets to your left and right. And the seating is also, some seating is also to your left. Again, this is very early in the morning before they even had breakfast set up. So you really can't unfortunately see any of the food on this ship tour. But there's your Coca-Cola freestyle machines. If you get the um, deluxe beverage package or just the classic soda package, uh, that is obviously included and you get a little souvenir cup with it. This is the back area of Windjammer. Lots of seating back here with beautiful views out of the back of the ship. More kind of a, I believe this was more of an omelet station for breakfast and like a make your own uh, pasta bar uh, for lunch and dinner. Lots of seating. This is the very back of Windjammer. Lots of extra seating if you can't find any on the sides. Lots back here and lots of very good views. And now this is the other half. Obviously, this side they're getting it set up for breakfast, so you can see some of the food here. And here's another beverage station with your coffee and teas, all your hot beverages there. And on the other side, it's just an exact mirror image of Windjammer. Um, on our sailing, it's still under kind of reduced capacity, so they really only had one side of Windjammer open, and it wasn't even open for dinner. It was literally only open for breakfast and lunch, so no dinner. But I'm sure that hopefully, knock on wood, that that will change very soon. Now we're going to go out onto the open air part of deck 16. This basically is your is your sun deck. If you love to sunbathe, they are always going to have uh, some sun loungers, as you can see off to the left here, to sit and relax on. If you want to read a book out in the sun, just catch your vitamin D, this is the place to do it. It's a very relaxing area. can get a little windy uh, in when you're out at sea, but it's usually not too bad. And in the middle of the ship here, right to your right, this is the mast bar. So it's right in the middle of the ship. Just a nice little bar that's usually only open during the day. So if you're up here, get a little thirsty or dehydrated, make sure you fill up and get some water there. And we're gonna head over to the other side of deck 16 on the sun deck now.
I'm getting my steps in just going over to the other side of deck 16 here. Obviously, again, it's kind of like Windjammer. Just a mirror image. Lots and lots of space out on the sun deck for you to relax. Enjoy the sun, the warm weather, and if you're in the Caribbean, <laughs> that is. So not really much else to say. I think it's kind of self-explanatory. Sun deck, get your sun rays in. And we're now heading in to deck 16 at the very front of the ship. This is where you're going to find Hooked. This is your um, seafood specialty restaurant. It's kind of theme like, you know, uh, New England uh, seafood bar, I guess if you want to call it that. So again, this is where you're going to find all of your uh, seafood needs and get them fulfilled. Lots of lobster, uh, crab legs, stuff like that. We did not partake, but it did look awfully good. Now, on other ships like uh, Lure, Harmony, Oasis, this is kind of just a um, solarium bar area. It's very open. I actually kind of thought it was a little bit of like wasted space on those ships, but they did a very good job kind of putting this uh, venue in here, you know, so that way you'd have a little more entertainment, food options, and I think they did a very good job with it. It's a very beautiful restaurant. And now arriving on deck 15, again at the front of the ship, this is the Solarium Bistro. It is a uh, specialty restaurant that you can dine in. Uh, for breakfast though, it is kind of like a little mini buffet and what I like to call a little um, hidden gem. Windjammer always seems to be busy, so when we're on an Oasis class ship, this is where we usually end up for breakfast. On our sailing, unfortunately, I think due to COVID still, it was closed. But during normal operating conditions, they do have this open for breakfast. And it is like the same exact food as Windjammer. So we like to come here because it's a little less, actually a lot less busy usually than Windjammer is. And it is a beautiful decor, especially on Symphony of the Seas. I love the kind of color palette. It's like a Mediterranean kind of feel to it. And that's what they're kind of going for, for like their uh, dinner, especially here. There is a small cover charge for dinner. I'm not sure what it was at the time of our sailing. It's not too much, and it can be worth it. I've seen some people be in this restaurant and eat there, and it looks delicious. I would recommend doing it, and we might possibly do it on our next cruise. And now moving to the outside part of deck 15, we're going to move a little bit towards the front of the ship here. Take a peek at the solarium. This is the adults only area on Symphony. So you do have to be 16 plus uh, to get in here. And I believe, yes, I am correct. I couldn't remember. <laughs> this is a vaccinated area, obviously because of COVID protocols at the current time. Any other time, anybody can come in here. 16 plus. They do have a little towel station, obviously right there to your left. You can get or exchange or return your towels or whatever you need to do. I love the solariums on the Oasis class ships, especially just for their use of space, especially on Harmony and Allure, where they do actually have um, three levels, essentially, to these solariums. They have hot tubs up here on the main level, nice little bar area where you can get your drinks and use your alcohol package to your left. Lots and lots of seating in this solarium area. And right in front of you, this is the solarium pool. It did seem rather small for a over 6,000 passenger 
ship. Uh, even though we were sailing at reduced capacity, it did seem to be kind of full. So it was kind of awkward when you did get in there with, you know, a group of people that you weren't sailing with it was kind of weird this is the lower level of the solarium mostly seating down here but again beautiful beautiful scenery because you can see right out of the front of the ship same view as the captain because you're literally right above the bridge so lots of little day beds lots and lots lots excuse me lots and lots of loungers and on the right here that is like a little observation area beautiful place to um watch sail aways from and they do have way out at the tip there a little glass floor as you can see here in just a second little glass floor there so it's kind of cool to go stand out there get your jack and rose moment i guess if that's the closest you're going to get to on symphony of the seas but it's a beautiful area again to watch sail aways from And this is another actually interesting thing about uh, Symphony of the Seas, the pool there to your right. It's um, see-through. So if you're wearing a swimsuit that you're not totally, completely comfortable with, be mindful when you get into that pool because if there's anybody down on the lower level, they're going to see you. <laughs> Guaranteed. And now moving out of the solarium, back onto kind of the main pool deck area. Again, we're still on deck 15. This is the other side that has the cantilevered hot tub. There's obviously, you saw one on the other side of the ship. Great place, again, I hate to say it again, to watch sail away from because you can't see right over the sides. It's almost like an infinity edge uh, hot tub, essentially. And emerging out onto the main pool deck to your left here, those are the two uh, slides. I can't remember they have a name, but I can't remember what they were called. Very fun to have these on ships. Now, I love having some water slides that you can have a little extra uh, fun during your pool day. To your left, that is one of the three main pools. This is like just a standard pool that you would find on most every other ship. The other two are kind of specialty uh, pools, which you will see here in a couple of moments. They have the chairs. Obviously, again, this is the time of COVID, unfortunately, and they are spaced for social distancing, which is nice. It does make things seem, you know, a little less crowded as well. And to your right, this is another towel station that you can get, exchange, or return your towels to. Make sure you return those towels at the end of your cruise, by the way. This is your main pool bar to your left, so you can get all your drinks and enjoy your beverage package at that station. And now I'm walking into the smoking section. This is the only area of the ship that you can smoke in besides the casinos, right here to your right. And on the left of that, this is your sports pool, so it's a little bit deeper than the other pools on board, so you can play like the volleyball and other kind of water activities. And just behind the sports pool area, this is the Paddy Dive Center, where you can do actually uh, diving lessons on the ship in that sports pool as well. You can also buy uh, your snorkel equipment if you don't have any and you'd like to try snorkeling on your vacation too. And right behind that, by those doors, that's your ice cream on one side of the ship. I believe there is another one on the other side. We'll get to that in a minute here. Always good to have one of those nice, cool ice cream treats on a hot Caribbean day.
And now coming out to the very back of deck 15, this right here, this is the back of the um, kids club or, you know, teens area, I believe, which is right here. Obviously, I'm not a teen or a kid anymore, so I didn't really have access to that. But I believe anybody can go in and play the ping pong there. They have all the equipment for you right by the tables. On the other side of that, that is your mini golf. Pretty self-explanatory. It's uh, self-serve. Get your clubs, get your scorecards, pencils, all that good stuff. Just play at your own pace. And now at the very end of the ship, this is more sportsy stuff for you to do. This is one of two flow riders. Usually they have stand up on one and boogie board on the other. And then at the very back of the ship, this is your ultimate abyss. It is a dry slide and it's so fun to go down that all the way down those decks to deck six or your boardwalk area. There is a bar right to your left. I'm not sure if you can see it, but they do have alcoholic beverages there that you can grab. This is the other flow rider. Like I said, usually they have one stand up and one kind of boogie board. So it's nice and spread out. On some ships, they only have one and they separate it. And it gets, gets kind of crazy sometimes. And again, this is probably just COVID protocol stuff. They only had really one open for our sailing. But they did switch it off between stand up again and boogie board. And going kind of back down here, going towards the front of the ship again on deck 15, this is your sports court area. So they do lots of little activities here, basketball, soccer, dodgeball, even uh, activities like um, yoga. They have like a little like um, jazzercise. I've also seen that there. Pickleball even. I've even seen pickleball at this uh, location. And just ahead of the sports court, this is one of the best places to eat on board Symphony of the Seas. It's called El Loco Fresh. I'm sure most of you familiar with Royal Caribbean have heard of this. It's not on all ships. I wish it was. This is your Mexican kind of uh, taco bar, just general Mexican food. Lots and lots of delicious food here where you can create your own tacos, get a quesadilla, a burrito. It's uh, mostly just grab and go. So it's very convenient, very fast, and is very popular. It is open normally uh, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But again, thanks to uh, COVID, it is actually only open, I believe, for lunch, possibly dinner, but it is closed for breakfast. I really want to try that for breakfast. So right in on deck 15, uh, just by the aft elevators, you're going to find this little area just off to your right here. You'll see it in a second. It's a, just a cool little area where it's like a vending machine, basically, where you can go in, buy your sundries if you forgot any, you know, toothpaste, uh, Tums, sunscreen, stuff like that. They even have like headphones and stuff there too. Another thing, if you didn't notice, uh, there also is little charging stations there as well. So you put in your phone, doesn't matter what type it is, make a little pin code, nobody else can get to it. So if you're out on the pool or something, need to charge your device, you can put it there securely and not have to worry about it. It's really cool. And just on the other side of the aft elevators, this is the teens club here. They got some like uh, game systems, Xbox, PlayStation set up here. Obviously not a teen, couldn't go in there. So I really couldn't do much filming. I'm just gonna go back to the other side real quick because I actually realized that I forgot something uh, kind of important actually, especially if you have kids or if you're like me and you still like uh, playing video games <laughs> as an adult, you're gonna love this arcade coming up here on the right. And I said, it's just on the other side of where that little vending machine area is and on the same side of the ship as El Loco Fresh. But it is a huge, huge video arcade and you can win prizes and other stuff if you do care about that stuff. I'm sure all the younger kids do want like a prize or something. It's a cool thing to have. Little crane machines there. Tons and tons of variety in this uh, arcade. Also, one thing you do want to mention, or I do want to mention, is it is extra. None of this stuff is free. It would be really cool if it was, but you do have to pay. Each game is different, so I can't really speak on how much each game is. We really didn't play any here, but it is a lovely area to have on any cruise ship.
and we're gonna head out to the main pool area here again on the other side of the pool deck on deck 15. Area to your left here obviously is the uh, kitty area for kitties only, but they do have lots of nice little water slides, a little dump bucket there, little uh, water cannons or something, whatever you want to call them, to uh, if they want to squirt each other with some water, but a lot of the kids do have a very fun time there. Coming up on the left, this is the other uh, pool bar. There are one, or excuse me, is one on either side. So if one, two's busy, you could go to the other side of the ship and try that pool bar there. Lots of good uh, options, obviously, at the pool bar. So you may just gonna walk through these folks, just having, they're having their little morning powwow. <laughs> I felt bad kind of walking through them, but anyways, uh, to the left here on the other side of the uh, the water slides here. This is the beach pool. So it's just like a gradual entrance into this pool, which is really nice. And you can sit on the edge, but you can see the water kind of coming up there. So it's like a, you know, a little sandy beach area, a hot tub, obviously right next to it too. So you can relax. And if you have some kids playing in that pool, you can keep an eye on them. And I love these water slides on the Oasis class ships as they have the, uh, what I, what I call the toilet bowl. I know it's a pretty big name for it. And I think one of the most fun water slides there is. I guess I did forget to point out when we were on the other side where the restrooms are on the pool deck. There are ones here. This is the ladies side on the starboard side. Men's obviously on the other side on the port side. Back inside on deck 14 by the front elevators here. This is where you're gonna find your puzzle break center or your escape room as is more commonly called. And also in this uh, little hallway here that's unfortunately blocked off because it's again, very early in the morning when I did my tour. This is Adventure Ocean. So this is all your preteens, your little kiddos where they're gonna have lots of fun. And now we're just gonna go down a couple decks. There's really nothing to see on decks uh, 13 through nine. It's all just cabins at the front of the ship. So I'll just fast forward it so you don't really have to <laughs> suffer through me walking down all these stairs. And now coming out here on deck eight is the, I would probably say best spot on any cruise ship I've really ever seen. Central Park, only on the Oasis class ships. It is absolutely beautiful with all of the live plants. On the, the starboard side of the ship here, this is your kind of high end shopping area here. Hublot, Cartier, Bulgari. I still don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's your high end uh, kind of shiny, shiny shops there. And on the right, just past those, this is the Park Cafe. I think another little hidden gem on Oasis class ships, especially during lunchtime on sea days. They have some really good options here and lots of seating, even alfresco seating, as well as the, your indoor seating to sit at <laughs> while you're eating. But they have tons of good and they also have lots of um, grab and go stuff too here as well. We're kind of going to do a crisscross pattern so I can cover everything here on Central Park. There are a lot of things to see. And like I said, all of these plants here, they are live. They are living. There is a team dedicated to keeping all these plants alive and healthy. And it is amazing what you see them do and how they maintain it. It's, it's, fa it's very fascinating. This is a cool little section that a lot of people actually go through because it's just off the beaten track really. But if you want something like a little private, you know, just kind of relax a little bit with all the noises, this is the area to do it in. It's right uh, just past the trellis bar there. That is actually our favorite place to go to right before uh, dinner time for a little pre-dinner cocktail. It's fantastic and very quiet in the evenings too. Just here, right here, this is gonna be the entrance for the Rising Tide Bar when it is located up here. Right now it was down on the uh, Royal Promenade, so I really couldn't show you much of that. And right across from that entrance is 150 Central Park. This is kind of the premier restaurant for the Oasis class ships. It's like a farm fresh to table sort of restaurant. So, you know, locally sourced ingredients, that kind of thing. They do even uh, prepare some of your dishes at the side of your table too. It's really cool. 
And on the other side of the ship across from 150 Central Park is Chops Grill here to your left. One of the best specialty restaurants, I think, on any Royal Caribbean ship. It's your classic steakhouse. So you got tons of steak, lots of uh, carbs included in that as well. I love that they have outdoor seating on the Oasis class ship for Chops. It is an option if you do want to eat outside and it is covered also by glass. So if it's raining, you still have that option. Really cool. Coming back to the middle of Central Park here, you're gonna find Jamie's Italian. This is this specialty uh, Italian restaurant. Pretty self-explanatory, I think, too. They partners with uh, Jamie Oliver, so he has an influence like of all the dishes that they do serve here. Unfortunately, I believe their contract is over, so they're back to doing just the Giovanni's table a new Royal Caribbean ships. But so far in Symphony, it is still available as a specialty dining restaurant. And right next to that, right back at the front of the ship, is going to be Vintages. So this is your wine bar, tapas bar, where they have lots of those. It is at an extra cost and does not come with a um, deluxe beverage package if you do have it. But if you enjoy some wine and some cheese and other stuff like that along those lines, be sure to check it out. And coming down to deck six, again, we're still at the front of the ship, and these are right next to the front elevators. This is gonna be your vitality spa and the gym, and also right as you go through the front entrance here to the spa, to your right where all that seating is, this is gonna be your vitality cafe, so they're gonna have like all your fresh pressed juices, smoothies, stuff like that for you to buy. Again, does not come in uh, any beverage package. It is an extra cost, so keep that in mind. And across from the Vitality Cafe, you're gonna find the salon so you can get your hair done, your manicures, your pedicures, all sorts of those kind of services right there in the salon. And to your right there, that is the entrance to the uh, thermal suites, so that's where all of your spa, Procedures are going to take place and also like I said the thermal suite is located We don't have access to that so unfortunately I couldn't go in there But that's where you go if you do receive any uh, spa treatments will be to the right the left there where I'm going right now This is the entrance to the gym huge fitness center on board Symphony of the Seas I don't think you could ever possibly fill this place up probably even with the entire ship Let's look at all those uh, bikes that you have there treadmills Oh, weights, they have lots of those. There's even uh, special areas that you do like kind of your classes in and they have towels, I forgot here as well. They do little special classes and kind of like little nooks and crannies here. So this is where any, if you sign up for any of those, they'll have those. If you want to do the Stairmaster, you can do those too. Tons of free weights if you're into that kind of thing. More treadmills there with the best view at sea because you're really close to the water. So if you do a treadmill, you're going to have a nice view when you're working out. And also in the gym is a, a little kind of secret staircase here that goes down to deck five. This is the uh, running track. So you have full access to the running track and vice versa. If you're running, you want to go up to the gym or you kept anything up there, you can use this staircase as kind of a way to get in between the two. It's really cool. So now we are on the jogging track, huge, huge jogging track on board Symphony of the Seas. Same as all Oasis class ships, it goes all the way around the entire ship from where I started there. It is one huge big loop, a little bit of incline, um, about three quarters of the way down it is a little bit of incline, so it gives you a little bit of variety. And obviously on the right here, this is kind of like a little sporting slash relaxing area. They have ping pong tables here and a couple little seats, so it's cool to kind of get out of the way, out of the hustle and bustle, because it's usually pretty quiet on the jogging track, except for if you have anybody walking or running around. It's a nice little kind of quiet area if you want to play, you know, more by yourself. So we are at the front of the ship, and I'm gonna walk around this entire jogging track. Not gonna make you go walking pace, though. I'll speed up the video here to get kind of rid of these boring parts, but you can still get the general idea of how huge this jogging track is.
And now we're obviously coming up to the very back of the stern of the ship. These stairs to your right here, those go back up to the um, to the boardwalk area. You're almost kind of behind that screen there at the aqua theater, but that's, those stairs do lead up there. You are able to use them whenever you need. And obviously one of the best views ever on board a cruise, Wakeview is the best view. Look at that, look at that sunrise, fantastic. Again, these stairs here, these do go as well up to the boardwalk area. Again, behind the other screen, they are kind of difficult to see. You really don't know they're there unless you're on the jogging track or you walk almost behind that screen on the boardwalk to get there. So now going on the other side, I'm gonna speed up the video here so you don't have to go at the same pace that I'm going at. And after coming back in from the jogging track on deck five, this is the upper level of the theater at the very front of the ship where you can go in on the balcony level. The theater was closed this early in the morning. They keep it shut, unfortunately. So I'll give you a little peek here. You can kind of see the seats down in the bottom and up in the balcony area here where we are. They have usually a bar set up on the lower level too if you have a show and you need a drink. So it's very convenient. Beautiful theater as well. And of course here on deck five, this is the Royal Promenade, something that Royal Caribbean is famous for. Beautiful indoor areas here. This ship does have your Starbucks right in front of you, full fledged. So you can get any kind of drink that you want there. And just pass on the left that you can't see anymore is Bolero's, the Latin club. They have lots and lots of live music going on here. Beautiful drinks, excuse me, delicious drinks, I guess rather, delicious drinks that you can partake in there if you're kind of more into the Latin scene. And to the left there, Regalia that is kind of your fancy watch store you can get all your kind of shiny watches there and of course another uh royal Carib excuse me royal caribbean staple here sorrento's the pizza place you can also get little uh, tapas you know like olives and such they have your coke freestyle machines there if you have the beverage package that is for you to use and if you need to you can't get water from those so if you don't have a beverage package you still can get water there as well and now here is a place we always like to visit, the next cruise desk. You can book your next cruise at this shop here. They do have some cool little uh, deals usually. Depending on what kind of room you get, you can get different um, credit levels. You can get some onboard credit and a reduced deposit, which is always nice. Right across from that is guest services. So if you have any sort of issues throughout your cruise, visit here, or you can obviously call them from your stateroom phone and get right to them. Next to that is another regalia, watches, obviously. <laughs> Get your shiny watches here. If you have any trouble with the internet at the back end of the promenade is the Voom desk. If you have any trouble with your internet, that's where you need to go. Uh, port shopping desk, have any questions about shopping in any of the ports, that's where you wanna go for that. And next to that is the Bionic Bar, the robot bartenders. They do put up a good drink, or you can even make your own drinks there as well, at a cost, of course. This is the Rising Tides Bar. It has a little schedule, so it goes up and down at certain times, which you can find that right in front of you there. It tells you when the next departure is. And of course, across from the next cruise desk is the Royal Promenade. Everything there, except for the uh, specialty coffee, is free. So if you're ever hungry for a little bite or a little uh, water, that's where you want to go. Next to that is the shop. That's your Royal Caribbean logo shop. Get all of your swag there if you're looking for that kind of stuff. Next to that is the Copper and Kettle. It's like a British themed pub. Lots of uh, different kind of beers on tap and 
the same kind of atmosphere. Next to that is the Port Merchants here. That is where you can get your alcohol, your perfume, all of course duty free. Solera, that is your like sundries. If you don't want to visit those vending machines up at the top, you can go there and get all of your needs met. Next to that is the on air. They have like a karaoke there. Sometimes they have a little comedy or mostly what they had there was the trivia actually during our cruise. I thought that was an interesting venue for that. And now obviously we're going back the other way so you can see a little bit more of Bolero's there. As I said, that is a great bar. I love all of the live music that they have there and their drinks are one of the best places to get them on the ship. And now we're on deck four at the front of the ship. This is the main entrance to the Royal Theater. So your floor seating, this is where you're gonna go for that right there. Beautiful theater though. And we're gonna turn and go back towards the back of the ship. And love this little piece of artwork here, kind of like a Tootsie Roll pop that's kind of melted there. That's so cool. I've always loved, loved to see the art on some of these ships, especially right there in the Oasis class. And to your left here, this is going to be the Diamond Lounge. So if you're at that tier on the Loyalty, this is, or excuse me, the Diamond Club. I didn't realize it was called that. <laughs> this is where you're going to go. They have lots of little uh, extra special things for Diamond, Diamond Plus, and the Pinnacle members for Royal Caribbean. And unfortunately, I did cut off the entrance to Studio B. It's kind of right to the right. If you wouldn't have gone in to this entrance to the casino, that's the entrance to Studio B, the ice skating rink. So that's essentially on the other side of the wall to the right here. Beautiful area. They do have like free skate that you can do um, on some days of your cruise if they're offering it and of course they have all the ice skating shows in there as well and also I forgot they do have laser tag on some days of cruises too so that's where if you have laser tag on your itinerary or on your uh, cruise planner that's where that'll be this is obviously the entrance to the casino, a very big casino. Of course, on the biggest ship in the world, you're gonna get a big casino. I believe we are on the smoking side. I believe we are. Yeah, they, it's two sides. There's two entrances to it. One side is the smoking side. I believe it's on this side, which would be the starboard or right side of the ship that you're able to smoke on. And the other side of the casino on the port side or left side is your non-smoking area. Lots of table games, tons and tons of uh, your slot machines, even if you like the little quarter push machines, we love to do those. They have lots of those there. We never were in need of a seat, <laughs> essentially, on our cruise. If we wanted to gamble some money, there was an empty spot for you. There is the bar to your right there. If you're in the casino, need a little adult beverage, that's where you want to go. They got some TVs set up there as well. If you want to watch some sports while you're gambling, they have those. This, like I said, I believe this is the non-smoking side. We're on the left side of the ship now. So this is all the non-smoking table games and your slot machines. And on the port side of the ship, the left side, this is where you're going to find your Park West Art Gallery, just outside the casino entrance here. If you need to buy some art, or want to buy some art, this is where you're going to go. Tons of selection here, they always have art auctions, and even art raffles that you could potentially win a piece of art. It's beautiful to walk through here to see all the different pieces that they offer. And as we come back out here to the front of deck four, this is the attic. This is kind of, uh, it's kind of a multi-purpose space. It's the club where you can go dancing in the evening time. This is a lot where we had our comedy shows was at the attic here. And also sometimes they will do like uh, trivias or karaoke possibly, but that's more on uh, deck five on the Royal Promenade on, on air. Again, we're gonna 
go back here to the, this is the main entrance of the theater. If you're looking for your headliner shows, this is where you want to go. And on deck three, this is where you're gonna find your conference center. We're at the front of the ship by the elevators here. I really couldn't do or show the conference center much. There was an event going on, I believe, for employees. So we're just gonna skip back and I actually have to go back up to deck 14 at the back of the ship. Surprise, look at that. We're back on deck 14. We're at the aft of the ship or the back end. And this is where you're gonna find your Seven Hearts card room. So it's a nice little quiet uh, private room here. You don't have to reserve it or anything. If you wanna play some like uh, card games or board games, this is the place you wanna go. They have little tables there for your chess or checkers. And usually, um, if everything's going well in the world, they do have games that you can check out here. Oh, I forgot, they also have computers that you can, uh, you have to buy internet time from those, but those are available. But see those empty shelves there? They usually do have games that you can check out or borrow, but unfortunately, right now, 2021, it's COVID and they're not doing that sort of thing. I hope we get back to that normal time where you can check out games soon. And on deck 12 at the back of the ship by the elevators, this is where you're gonna find Wonderland Imaginative Cuisine. Beautiful space that they have here for a specialty dining and it's very quirky food that they have there. We went there and it's, it's definitely an experience. But even if you don't wanna eat there, Unfortunately, it was closed when I went through, so I can't show you much, but they do have a bar there that you can go and just buy their specialty drinks there. There are a few sort of unique cocktails that are only available in that Wonderland bar, but you can go in there, sit at the bar, and uh, order a beverage if you so choose. And on deck nine at the back of the ship by the elevators here, you're gonna find the upper level of Dazzles. Again, kind of a multi-use um, club slash bar area, but I love the differences that they make compared to Oasis, Allure, and Harmony of the Seas. They've really redone this space from the original like Dazzles, you know, cl club. And I love the color palette that they used here. It's, I feel a lot more eye-pleasing than the, like I said, the previous three of the Oasis class. And there's some nice stairs that can get you from the upstairs to the down. They'll have performances here, right where that rope is. Live bands a lot. They, excuse me, they have live bands play here a lot. Nice bar area where you can get your bar service if you got the beverage package or want to pay a la carte. But it's a beautiful, beautiful area that they do have lots of good live band music here. It's fantastic. And at the very aft of the ship, this is where you're gonna find the boardwalk. Lots and lots of entertainment and food and drink options back here. Love the little progression of horses that they have for the merry-go-round, one of the Oasis class signatures that all Oasis class ships have. It is free to ride, so have as many rides as you want. To the left here is your little hot dog stand. I can't actually remember what it's called, but you can get uh, complimentary hot dogs here. Get whatever toppings you want. And past that is Sugar Beach. It's like your candy store. This is an extra cost, so if you do buy anything there, it is gonna charge your ship card. And next to that is the Surf Shack. This is kind of more beachy stuff. Uh, clothes, swimsuits, sunglasses, flip-flops, stuff like that you can purchase there. 
This is Johnny Rockets, another little specialty uh, dining place on board Symphony of the Seas. Usually, again, non-COVID times, they actually do have breakfast here that is complimentary, but um, lunch and dinner at Johnny Rockets will cost you. I'm not sure what the price is because it is always changing, but they do have lots of good burgers and shakes. Also, the shakes are free or included in your deluxe beverage package if you have one. This is the beautiful aqua theater that they hold uh, the hero water show in and they do have sometimes little water shows as well. And your rock climbing walls are right above that. Beautiful views of the back of the ship here from the aqua theater. And sometimes they will hold like special events, uh, for instance, like a Super Bowl. If you have the Super Bowl, or if you're on a ship during the Super Bowl, you can watch it here. or. You can also watch it in Playmakers. This is the sports bar. They have lots of good uh, beer on tap here as well, including uh, Strongbow Cider, which I found very interesting and had a few of myself. They do have some uh, couple of games here. Those are an extra cost. I've seen on some ships, uh, smaller ships, that they do have actually some free games, but on Symphony of the Seas, they are all charge and right here this is connected to playmakers this is another little arcade again all of this is at a cost so keep that in mind as well there's a little there's the actual entrance if you don't feel like going through playmakers for it as well And just inside on deck six, right above the Royal Promenade, this is your shore excursion and the photo area, which is right behind it. So that's where you buy your photos and view them. Shore excursions is where you can book your shore excursions if you have not already done so. And on the other side, this is where you're gonna find the schooner bar. This is your uh, kind of piano bar. So if your piano player is gonna be here for your entertainment and right next to that, your loyalty desk. Any sort of questions with your crown and anchor uh, membership, that's where you wanna go for that. And on deck four, right by the entrance to the main dining room is where you're gonna find Izumi. This is your hibachi and sushi. They are two different prices, keep in mind. You can do the sit down, which is like the sushi and get lots of different options, not just sushi, but you have that, or you can do the hibachi, which is a little bit pricier, but it's more entertaining because you sit around the big grill and have lots of fun there while you're getting your food cooked. And obviously on deck three, this is the main entrance to the main dining room. There also are entrances on four and five. So keep in mind um, where your dining room is because there are essentially three separate dining rooms. I wish I could have gotten some footage of those main dining rooms, but I think they were getting ready for, um, you know, our breakfast service. So they were not open at the time. But that is the end of my ship tour for Symphony of the Seas. I thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Got some information, whatever you needed to get out of this video. And also be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed it. It really does help me out. And if you do want to see more content, Royal Caribbean Celebrity, all of the cruise lines, we like to do them all. Please subscribe. I really, really appreciate it. And until next time, we'll see you on board.